Well, hello again. Uh, this video is intended to provide you with an introduction to the concept of quality in the context of operations management. So uh, we use the term quality a little bit differently in operations management. And so uh, as a foundation to uh, a discussion later about statistical process control, we're going to lay the foundation here as to why how we think about quality and why why we think about quality in the context of operations management and operations strategy so we'll take a few minutes to just do that uh, in this short uh, overview so quality and strategy a, a manager's objective is to build total quality management or to build quality management into uh, their processes uh, and that system is intended to identify and satisfy customer needs. And so I think that that becomes the most important point to make relative to quality in an operations context is that quality is in the eye of the beholder. We often use the term quality to reflect, you know, high quality. You know, we would rather stay in a Four Seasons than a Holiday Inn Express. But of course, in those circumstances, we will pay for different experiences in a Four Seasons than we will in a Holiday Inn Express. And so Holiday Inn Express exists because they deliver in a manner that is consistent. And I think consistency is probably the term that is most attached to quality in an operations context so that we consistently provide that experience, but we provide that experience that gives the customer what they want. And so Holiday Inn Express exa exists and does a really good job of delivering that type of experience. And so they deliver quality uh, regardless of whether it is the best room and the best experience they give you the type of experience that you're expecting when you go there. And I think that that's the distinction that becomes important in a discussion of quality. So we have to manage, managing quality supports differentiation, low cost or responsive strategies. You know, again, it, there's, you know, low cost does not mean poor quality. Low cost means we want to be the cheapest people in the marketplace and doing that consistently, but still delivering the experience that people want. As an example, uh, although there is always a debate over what the best coffee is, uh, you would go to Tim Hortons and you would pay less for a cup of coffee than you would at Starbucks. Now, many people will argue they like that coffee better, and that is, of course, uh, entirely within the realm of, of personal taste. But really what McDonald's does is, sorry, what Tim Hortons does is provide consistency in that experience. They hit that point for coffee, and you know if you're gonna have a coffee at the airport in Toronto, in Buffalo, in Paris, uh, or in Listowel, Ontario, that experience is going to be the same. And that's what quality is. They have coffee that meets the expectation of their customers and they do it consistently. So quality can support differentiation, low cost or response strategies. Uh, quality also can increase sales and reduce costs. We'll talk about that towards the end of this uh, short video. Uh, building a quality organization is a, like this isn't easy. Thinking about quality is important, but it's not easy. So I've already spent some time talking about quality. Let's look at the American Society for Quality and 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 see how they define it. They they call it the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bears on its ability to satisfy stated or implied needs. So that means. It's not just the specific features of the product or the characteristics of that product. It can also be the technical support you get with it. So um, it, your ability to get help when you need it can affect quality. So quality is all attributes that we as customers expect or desire from a specific product or service. So 
the degree of excellence based on meeting or exceeding the expectations of the customer, including both high performance design. High performance design means, uh, uh, means giving them what they want, doing a good job, having all of those bells and whistles including value so sometimes if a bell and a bell you know something adds cost without creating value for you as an individual then that's not high performance design so part of that is also price and conformance means consistency your ability to consistently meet that expectation and in some cases it means not only not falling short but it means not shooting over. And you'll see that when we talk about statistical process control, where we have lower limits and upper, limit, upper limits on standards. You know, the problem is over delivering can change the expectation of that customer. If you have a profoundly good and unexpected experience one day, uh, you might expect that again the next day and be disappointed. And the reality is we respond more significantly to less than uh, expected experiences than we do to better than expected experience. So it's not a zero sum game. So quality is about giving them what they want, but also about doing that consistently. So let's use an example. Uh, there are, you know, these are Roman arches, many of which stand today. And there are two aspects of quality to those Roman arches. The first is design. Is it set up? Is it designed in a way that it can succeed? Because you can fail uh, before you even get to a product if you, if you design something that customers don't want. And the second is an execution, which is construction. So if you had a great design and you didn't build it well, it could also fail. And failure in either of those elements would result in poor quality. And so what happened in Roman times, uh, the architect and the construction supervisor were ordered to stand under the new archers as the supports were removed. So that's quite an extreme case of ensuring quality, but it gives you a sense of those two elements that are required to it. So let's talk for a moment about high performance design. Uh, it is, you know, the key characteristics or technical capabilities. It is the basics, the basic functions that you expect from whatever that, that product or service is. Uh, supplemental features, bells and whistles, extras that are nice to have that you might choose. Uh, reliability, the reliability, and we'll cover sort of measuring quantitative reliability in a later uh, in a later portion of the course. But reliability is also the likelihood that a product or service will perform uh, as expected. It is, will it give us what we want uh, or will it fail to meet those expectations? Durability is lifespan uh, and support is our ability to, to help people if things go wrong or if they're struggling with that product or service. So all of those can be important it doesn't mean we need to check each one of these boxes when we're designing a product. What it means is we need to think about these and say, are those important to a customer? And if we say no, then we shouldn't deliver it. So, so quality is a not only about giving them what they want, but also about not giving them what they don't want. And so again, uh, basic performance can include cost. So sometimes putting in bells and whistles, sometimes putting in really long life doesn't give people the value they're looking for. And, you know, an example I use is, you know, if I'm taking my, uh, my kids aren't small anymore, but when we took our kids to the beach, we would sometimes buy a cheap beach ball and some cheap shovels and, and pails so that they would have something to play with on the beach. We didn't want or expect that to last. And in fact, if we were on flying on a plane, uh, we, we weren't even gonna be able to take it home. So in that circumstance, we didn't want something that was super expensive and super durable. We wanted something that would last for the few days that we were on the beach. So thinking about those sorts of things are, are, are really important. And so we talked about you know the Roman arches and uh, uh, as we're getting close to the end here, a couple of things to think about. Quality happens at design, it happens at production, 
and it happens when people are using it. And so understanding that we design, produce, and then sell a product or a service, uh, there are elements of potential for failure all along here. We also have feedback systems, but there are also potential for misuse of the product. So sometimes people are using a product in ways that isn't suitable. And here's an, a, a quick example. This is not a design flow, that a, a design flaw. That sedan is being used in a way that it was never intended to use. So that is a failure that is a quality failure, but it is a quality failure driven by this individual who's the consumer using that product in a way that was not uh, for which it was not designed. So we may still get a call of complaint from this individual, but we would have to have, you know, say, well, if you look in the owner's manual, it says don't strap three tons of wood to the roof of your uh, of your sedan. And, and so uh, we need to think about ways that we can uh, prevent people from using the product incorrectly. So there are two ways that quality improves profitability. It can increase sales by doing a better job of delivering what consumers want, uh, by providing a price point that consumers want, and sometimes that means engineering features out of a product, and improve reputation. So if you are consistently delivering, your reputation improves and you might sell more. So that can increase profits. Quality can also increase profits by reducing costs. Uh, you become more productive if you're producing consistently and you, lo you, you lower rework and scrap costs, you throw less things out, you also fix fewer things uh, before they leave uh, and you have lower warranty costs because things last longer in consumers' hands. So you can, quality is across the organization and it is important to think about. So key dimensions of quality, performance, features, reliability, conformance, durability. We talked about those aesthetics. How does it look? Perceived quality. Is this good or bad? You know, sometimes just having the name on something uh, increases the quality. So if it's branded, you might think about it as having as being better than something else. So that perception and I've talked already about value. You know, think about Apple as an example. People perceive, particularly people who are fans of Apple, perceive that those products are better. And so they think that there's some value or there's some quality in just being seen with that or, or, or how, it, you, you know, how it works. It's not just, you know, it's the interface, all of that. So perceived quality matters too. So the last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up is, uh, not delivering quality costs you money. Uh, and so uh, there are costs of preventing the potential for defects. So, uh, you know, engineering in uh, safeguards, doing a good job, providing the, the support so people use it correctly. That, those are called prevention uh, costs. Then there are appraisal costs Appraisal costs are when we evaluate products or services as we are producing and delivering them. So prevention costs are before that happens. Appraisal costs are like inspection costs. Uh, they are sort of inspections, uh, measurement, and those sorts of things. Then we have internal failure costs. Internal failure costs are when uh, we produce something that isn't up to standard and we either have to throw it out we have to rework it if it's a service we have to train but the internal failure happens before the customer interface so there isn't there's the cost of fixing it or replacing it or whatever uh, but there isn't the cost of making it better and that's what external co failure costs with external failure costs we have the cost of replacing or fixing the product, but we also have that customer experience cost where we have to make it better uh, and we have compromised our brand 
particularly in the current environment where we have you know online reviews and 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 a bad performance can carry with us for a long time going forward so external failure costs are also uh, profoundly important to consider and you'll often see this as a question which cost of quality is generally the highest and the consensus is and the measurement the research is that external failure costs are the highest so that provides you with a very quick introduction to quality uh, how we think about quality how quality is about consistency and delivering what it is the, co the, the customer wants, which includes value and includes excluding things that the customer doesn't want. So think about it. Uh, I'll be posting several more talking about other elements of quality and then about statistical process control. Have a great day.